Hey, Tom Brannon here. You might have seen my recent video about mice interactions that was held in New York City. If you haven't seen it yet, it's a terrific video. You can click on the link uh, to watch it. Um, but the video has some excerpts of an interview we did with Barack Elam, the NICE CEO. I wanted to share the interview in its entirety because there's, there's some things we just weren't able to squeeze in. But we have a great conversation around the super wave of AI. We talk about digital transformation. We talk about some of the baggage that uh, AI and chatbots have from previous generations and why this generation is different. So stay tuned for the entire interview coming right now. Reinventing the way technology is consumed and reimagining the speed of CX innovation. With their own technology stack, became parallel owners of customer service. So Barack, thank you so much for making time. It's great to see you. It's great to be here in New York. What does it mean to you to not just be back at this big event, but to, to host it in New York? It's, it's been a you know, long-term dream of mine to host interactions uh, in New York. We used to do it in Vegas, in Orlando, before COVID. And we had to take a decision a couple of months ago whether we go to back in person, and we did, and also doing it in New York. And we, had a, we have an outstanding amount of people over here. We have, you know, north of 2,000 people attending wow. the event. We expected, you know, 1,000. So we <laughs> kind of maxed out the, the, the venue and, and it's packed and the breakouts are, are packed and that's just, just awesome. Yeah, I mean, the keynote, obviously, visually one of the most stunning presentations I've, I've ever seen. And I wondered how you were going to top your virtual presentations <laughs> where you're using green screens and all that kind of stuff, but you managed to do it. Tell me just, to, just real quickly kind of you know, what was involved in kind of pulling that off? So, you know, every year, as you said, we're trying to, to take it to the next level. You yeah. know, we have, we, we want to deliver messages, all of us, right? And I think, you know, visuals and graphics uh, in, a, in a creative way allows us to take any type of message, boring messages, complicated messages, and, you know, bring them to life in a different way, make them more interesting. And we have a great marketing team that every year come with some great idea. And this year they came with this idea of coming with, each, you saw it, huge screens that are in a certain angle, which allows you to actually for the audience to see the, the, the graphic mm -hmm. and the visuals and the videos in, in 3D. Mm -hmm. And that was just awesome. And the past months and a half working on that was just, you know, pure joy. Yeah, but it wasn't all just uh, glitzy, uh, fun animations and 3D effects. Um, you know, you, you really got into some red meat um, and there were, I mean, we could talk for an hour just about what you covered, but a couple things struck me. You kind of talked about this moment, the CX moment, and you use powerful metaphors like you're either the steamroller or you become part of the road. Uh, what do you mean by that? I think that, you know, it's, it's uh, true for the CX industry. It's true for many other things. Eventually, if you look at the past 30 years, we've seen several you know, waves of technology from hardware to software to internet to uh, mobile to cloud and now, now AI. And every company out there, as well as every vendor, have to find a way to center themselves into that and really leverage this technology uh, wave. And that was my key message to the, you know, to the many customers we have out there. You have to position yourself into the next wave, which is AI. And AI is not just a technology wave. It's, it's really a super wave, which I think is a true game changer for our industry, but of course for the world as a whole. Well, you know, a lot of the world kind of woke up that AI exists and it has a place in CX. It's been part of your, pivotal part of your strategy for years now. As the world kind of catch, catches up to where NICE was, was you know, uh, on this journey years ago, um, obviously that brings some awareness to AI, but it also brings some, some baggage that AI carries from the, the first generation of AI, things like chatbots and stuff. So how do you see the opportunity and how do you see that kind of challenge of, of people's maybe negative viewpoint of AI today? I think, again, going back to many other technological waves uh, that maybe people had at the beginning some not so great experiences with, you know, AI, as I said, is not, not a new thing. It's been out there for, for decades. But uh, what we're seeing right now is a classic thing of an early adoption of a technology. Individuals tried ChatGPT and BARD and other things, and they're now understanding what AI can do for them and what are the positive aspects of AI. And as soon as, as soon as individuals adopt a certain technology, 
Then comes the enterprise adoption cycle, which is very different because it requires of many, many things that individuals you know, don't, don't uh, uh, need. But I think that this will increase the uh, acceptance and maybe positive approach to what AI can do uh, to customer service. And hopefully in a few years we'll forget the very early stages of you know, how chatbot used to react and still are, by the way, when they're not really empowered by AI. And although they were, they were called like AI chatbot, quite frankly, they were not. Mm. The old yeah. version were not really AI empowered uh, chatbots. Well, and, and one thing I, I see a lot is people just equate AI with chatbots. But, but, and again, this goes back years now of, of your vision of it's, it's way bigger than that and yeah. it exists throughout the customer experience. And even into some of the admin tools, you showed off your, your new admin tool where you can just use simple English commands to get kind of complex data and analysis of what's going on in the contact center. Um, you know, that must be exciting for your customers to be able to have access to that kind of power without having to bring in developers and, and, and database experts and that kind of thing. I, I think that you know, if, you know, there are many things that I can do great for our lives. When it comes to CX and when you try to synthesize what, what AI is going to bring into CX and customer service, it goes back to three fundamental uh, things. First of all, what we always wanted is, which is you know, mass personalization at scale. That's, mm -hmm. that's what organizations want to achieve with their consumers, not something that can be achieved by pulling more and more labor into this environment. Second is the notion of being able to take decisions at a very fast velocity. Going back to what you said about all of a sudden I can see and do things that used to take days and I have to bring my data analyst and do it at a you know, click of a button. And uh, of course, you know, the first part, the third part, there are a lot of people working customer service. It is a very complex uh, thing. If you can really amplify the employees in the customer service using AI, that's kind of a you know, winning combination. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's you know, you, you do need the efficiency gains, you do need to, to but you also want to help customers and you want, you want to give them an experience that they want, you know, and, and I think AI has failed in that uh, to a large degree, um, but with this new generation, with the work you're doing with, with CXI um, in particular, to, to move them along the journey, maybe they, they don't even need a chat bot because your self-service is identified you know, and, and you're able to help them so that they, they don't even have to interact with a, with a bot or even a person. I, you know, I, I, I think that eventually as consumers, and we're all consumers, I always said that we eventually would like to interact with companies and providers in the same way that we do with our friends and families. Mm -hmm. When I, I, I like to tell the story that when I call my mom, she doesn't ask me five questions to understand who I am. And if I just corresponded with her over WhatsApp and then called her over the email, we continue to, the conversation from the, uh, from the same point. And eventually that's what, what people want to get when they, when they interact with, uh, with organizations. So to achieve that, it's not just about the AI piece. It's about how do you deploy AI in the, with the right technology stack on a single platform that connects all the data, all the applications, and all the processes together. And then when you bring AI into the, to that mix, it can truly do magic. Yeah, the last thing I wanted to touch on, because you talked about kind of restarting your digital transformation, like I'm sure there are a lot of some gasps in the room of like, what? You know, like we're, we're, we're just halfway through it and you want us to restart. What did you mean by that? Um, and, and, and kind of what does that mean to, to, to just flip that switch and kind of start over? Yeah, I know it's a hard, it's a tough message, but I, I think there is almost no other, no other option. Mm. Uh, you know, CX moved at a very, very fast pace in the last uh, two decades. And every time there is a new channel or something that consumer wanted to achieve, and all organizations build those siloed, both operations, but also siloed technology stack. And eventually we'd like to have a seamless journey for consumers. And there is no such thing as looking at voice engagement and digital engagement separately or attended or unattended. It all have to be one cohesive and one very fluent uh, process. So unfortunately, in a way I may be taking an overshoot position, but yes, Everything needs to be looked at as one journey, not a separate one. And hence, you actually have to redo some of the architecture. And I do see a lot of large enterprises understanding that what they have in digital are basically gen one type of solutions. And we are being asked to come into the mix and take a much broader approach. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess as technology evolves, you can't just take the old kind of paradigms and just kind of drop them, drop them into this new, this new area that we're in. So. 
Yeah, you know, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, if you would like, those technology waves allows us to do a significant tech refresh and yep. take everything else into, you know, to the next level. But I think that today with the combination of cloud, digitalization, and what I call AIization, you bring it all together into a single platform and a broader approach and really the sky's the limit. Well, again, phenomenal job kind of painting that picture with the, the entire presentation. Again, it's, I, I know I, I won't forget it, so uh, awesome job there. Thanks so much for your time today. Thanks for sharing your vision, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you to Barack for being so gracious to sit down for this interview. And, and again, if you haven't seen the, the full recap from the event, please check that out. And we'll see you next time on Unconvergence.